Almost forward fast enough to get ahead of Kerrigan. He's got to be careful, Kerrigan. He's got to get a reload in. Thankfully, Rain is able to swing back and save him. How is Stewie still alive? There's three players surrounding him. That buys so much space inside of the site that Fallen is able to put down the bomb as Bronchi will try and work back in. All three of them, in fact, going in that direction. The only one who's not is Olaf, who's back towards CT. On top of the box, though, it's Elise. He's got three, and he's looking oh. for a fourth. That is incredible from him to win out the pistol for Liquid. That's magical. They need that from Elise. That's an ace as well in the pistol round, all five kills, and it was looking shaky. Both teams, some scrappy shots. I, I thought FaZe had a the exact kills they would need to make that retake happen, but the X factor of Elise, and that's what he can deliver for you. A pistol round right at the get-go, all five kills. Absolutely magnificent control of the Glock. I mean, that kill's huge. The kill Olaf Meister gets onto Naf at triple boxes, that's the one that I thought sealed it. Because Naf is the player who's peeking on contact. Naf is that follow-up player when Fallen, when Elyse get into... If ever a chance for a ninja, that would have been it. However, that smoke had a timer and he may have been exposed a little bit late. He gets a kill instead. That'll favor Olaf to try and go for this as he uses the scout. Tag through the pillar actually does a little bit of damage with the scout, so Stewie... Hit up to 88, Nate probably helps. Shit, but the Deagle's even better. He's got this. He looks his back oh! away to try and find the bomb, and he returns the favor to Elise. That is an incredible shot. That is disgusting. Does he have it? I think this he's is, got it. I don't know if... Oh, he does. Ooh, oh, right my God, he does. I didn't think he did. When that went green... Oh, my God, Olaf. That's ridiculous. That is a clutch. Uh, you cannot lose as Team Liquid. The two on one. Elise misses a couple bullets, but you got to give props over to Olaf Meister. That transfer over, the, the aim flicking over with the Deagle onto Stewie, that shot is spectacular. He thought he was at pillar the whole time. Absolutely beautiful. And a full 10 second diffuse on top of it. And even more importantly than, than them making those decisions is, is winning those fights as well. Ali's going to take a bit of a tag. He's going to back away after that. 59 HP. Fallen. They'd love that op to catch fire here in the second half. He's got his first kill of the round on Olaf Meister. Nice shot from Fallen as he falls back inside of the library. He's not going to be done there either. Got the first player, and Elise was there to support. Just to make window reigns, doing enough damage and just enough distraction to slow this retake down. There's no kits. Oh, I take it back. Excuse me. Fallen does have one. I quickly glanced and didn't see any, but they've used their only bit of utility. They have to go for kills, and they're going to try and do so, but it's Kerrigan, who has three in the back lines, and make it a fourth as he swings back out from the pillar. That is a brilliantly positioned round from him on Catwalk. Rain gets zero kills, zero assists, and obviously doesn't die either, but he has a big role to play in this game, holding up at top middle behind the boxes. You could see Sugi and Elish kind of peeking and taking some small skirmishes with them. Essentially, Rain just stops them from being able to flank Catwalk, being able to flank Underpass. He has that information, funnels everyone from Liquid into the retail take towards market, which is where obviously huge setup. Two players immediately to the right as soon as you come out if you're liquid, and a bunch of glock. He's gonna go all the way through, and Fallen's gonna try and support him, but that's too easy. He turned around too late, and Olaf already there. Elise tries to step out. What a snap from Olaf to take him down, and Fallen does at least get one in return. Bomb is down at Horseshoe, top side of middle, so watch out, because the fact that they are gonna get pinched bottom of mid means they have to go back for that, and Naf becomes a problem as they want to boost up. Twist is a little bit late to find that shot. Fallen on the AWP will go down one on one. It twist has the advantage in the HP, but I thought the positioning of Grim that is phenomenal for Twist to spin it around, and we get an 8 7 half. Well, at least this time the soul crushing 1v2 clutch comes in the final round of that. It's the only weapon they really have. Oh, oh good wow. shot from Rain. He steps around the smoke. This is everything. Rain's still there as well. He knows they've got to recover. He sneaks out, but he's taken down. He missed it. The uh, Tech 9, it's Dewey with the AK. Hold on. Now it's Liquid with the lesser weapons, but Olaf is going as vintage as possible today. And he'll distract, but the AWK oh. can't. Oh, and Elise, he made it so close, but Olaf holds his nerve. Three kills, and we've got extra innings in this one. Yeah, what a gutsy battle from Team Liquid in the last round, and a great hold on from FaZe. Man, that's tough, and a little bit of giggles as pressure and tension is released. Everyone can breathe a little bit easier. 15-15.
What a match. I can't believe we're getting this now for elimination. I was to close this out. Back toward B. Olaf and Brokey. He's made no mistake. Olaf's close enough. Doesn't even need to get the second shot lined up in time as rain will fall. Nap gets the kill at middle and he's lurking late. He'll get twist as well. Watch for Stewie. He's gotten Olaf alive. It's down to Brokey. One on two. He knows one of them's toward middle, but he knows the bomb is down inside of the site. So how does he play this? His flashbang will be utilized to try and dispel Fallen from position on the balcony and allow him to rotate over. Going to bench is a bit of a risk though, because surely at some point in time, the peak has to come from Naf. He's going to wait it. He's got it down. Now he's got the information, but he's lost the time. Has he jumped to middle? Is there a chance he gets toward checkers? He'll check that instead. And Brokey might be what breaks liquid as it all comes down to the, the rookie versus Naf. The rookie, and he's got the shot. Brokey is keeping his first major dreams alive. And liquid are eliminated. FaZe will be moving forward. That's an absolutely magnificent clutch from Brokey. All that movement, you're right. That much movement, it's a risk. But he's saying they know exactly where I am. I have to get into a new position. I have to go for the Galil in order to, to buy some grenades for his squad. Maybe they'll drop Tova, but they will get an early kill to very nice. Case Rats are trying to hold on now. Sees a third player and he's still got bullets and the bomb now. Suddenly, four versus two for Furia. Fast play from Entropic completely denied. Yeah, Furia powering up quite early on here. Looking like they might be in for a pretty good half. Just with the energy that we're seeing already. Just And also stomping out Entropic's ability to get a grip on the map in the buy rounds and again you know it's, it's this territory of plant not sure about how likely that is but if they can get some damage here that would be great maybe if they can get these two kills that could be a start but it's a good angle here it's such a superior angle for Keserato he'll take down both players so not really all that much to be done and the money is growing and growing and growing for Furia as in Tropic Sills. Yeah, after that first pick, you thought there was a chance, but there was a flashbang that was eaten, which slowed Lackey down somewhat. Wasn't clear on the kill feed where it came from, but certainly helped Furia out, regardless of who threw it. Again from Nickelback, as Entropic start to rush towards this A site. But Vinny, he's been incredible so far. He's on the AK-47, gets flashed, doesn't get a chance. Great stuff again from Entropic. Really making this round sing for themselves. This drop starts to eat away at that defense and now we're in the 2v2 after plot can entropic hold it down drop has a smoke drops dead he's been dropped by forrester now in the 1v1 he has to win this round there's only three rounds and a half left and the tropic have got two from 12. they really need something from this art oh, looking the wrong way didn't see him slip away and that will be entropic finally with a third round converting off of a bomb plant eventually yeah, it does seem like Entropic are a little bit cold um, off the bat here today on map one. Just We are starting to get time pressure though for this bomb to get planted. Yuri's not even going to check. He's not even going to check if somebody's on the other side. He's just confident they're not making the play, but the speed of the MP9 is too much for Yuri, which leaves Arts in a, pr in a pickle, in a predicament. He hasn't got the bomb planted for him. And he could be over by the sandbags now. I'm not showing on shore, so this is going to make things difficult because they can only hold one angle. Which one is it going to be? Is it going to be the ramp? The transfer from our <laughs> quick deletion. Thank you very much. The last round on a B bomb site was like ammunition in GTA, and this is even something more devastating for Entropic as Furia move very close to victory in this first map. Wow, I really thought that Entropic were going to win that. I thought, you know, we had the turnaround, like somehow. They find their way back into this round, and that could, that could have been the redemption. Get the AWP back in your hands. It's here somewhere. <laughs> He's crushed Art there. What a counterplay that we just saw out of Forrester, and that's going to keep the round alive for Entropic here. Two players left for Fury, though. Keserata and Yuri trying to hold on, and Yuri will defend against the flank there. So, with 30 seconds, Entropic looking to go for this. Oh my goodness. Now Forrester is in a very hard position, has to find a fight. He's found Keserato. Keserato doesn't want to give it to him. The time is against. Forrester has to go for the plant, and Keserato and Yuri will play together. Oh, he can still do this, Forrester. He's made it 1v1 now, and he will clutch out the round and keep Furia on the back foot in Eco territory. And Entropic are three rounds away from storming to a second, a third map, excuse me, after getting smashed on the first one. It looks like gain revenge on Furia here in the second. Yeah, it's looking really rough indeed, but it, it, they haven't looked back. 
from that pistol on the second half. They have not drop nickel back. The bomb can be collected and ferried down to the planting position. Very important kill by Elian. And it's looking like Entropic are getting the kills that they need. Yuri will have to swing around quickly as well. Art coming down the vent as well. Looking to punish, and he will. Forrester goes down. Elian with the AWP. That's a nasty shot from Elian. There's one more to go. As Art said, Elian is good for it. What a finish from Entropic. So many things happening in that round. Cutting off the flanks, uh, sorry, cutting off the rotations into the vent, but we already had a CT in there. A very important clutch frags on the B bomb site for Entropic again. Furia try goes, popped by Forrester, and it gets even better for Entropic. Yeah, just Yuri left now. It's going to be a tough one. There's the first frag, though. Three more to go for Yuri to pull this one off. Oh, this player's all over the place. Yuri somehow dodging these bullets. Hitting the shots! My god, Yuri looking for the last one now. Elliot coming quickly, but Yuri has just nailed him. How has he done that? That is an utterly insane clutch from Furia. Entropic had to win that round, progressively getting better and better for them. Huge man advantages, but just by a box, Yuri, isolating these fights, making it hard as possible, and delivering on every shot, not taking any bait. Have a look at these peaks. One versus four. At this point, Mater two. Fantastic flick onto Crad, and he's ready for the last one as well. Dismantling Entropic like they're pieces of Lego. Insane stuff. I mean, with with plays like that, I mean, what do you do if there's no util left? Trying to block the smoke to maybe create some opportunity, a gap or something, and they don't need anything they can find. Two kills on the bomb site, but Crad's got to stay alive for his team. Trying to break Crad. What on earth? They're lining up low health and. That is exactly the kind of stroke of luck Entropic needed, but they still have a round to clutch and Yuri's alone again, and we know what he can do. Not on this occasion, though. Crad walks through that smoke and will deny him. Great presence of mind to do that, but that one round just gives them half the score again. Yeah, they really needed something to kind of go their way, and that was weird. That was really crazy. That was like the last like four bullets as he's like walking back in spring. Shin doesn't have an angle for Yuri. No one's watching this, but surely the footsteps will be heard. He's stopped the plot. He's done more than that, Lackey. Just when he needs to. There's no utility left for Furry to plant his bomb. Nickelback with position now. So close to disaster, but Entropic are still here. Oh my God, Vinny. He's trying to make this doable. 15 seconds. Doesn't know where Krad is. Okay, escapes around the angle. Oh, oh it's man. just the one tap to secure it. My God. Then there it is. Into the arena. Furia go. And you can see what it means to them. They're, they'll be bringing that level to the arena and, and more. As soon as they get in front of that crowd, you know that this team knows how to deliver. Yeah, I mean, you can see what it means to them. They've made it to the champion stage. They're in trouble. Don't want to be losing too many raw rifles. Easily could have been a headshot there. Show crouching his way through. Yeah, they're going to give up on that catwalk control on the NIP side, which I think is fine. No reason to test it. There's that third kill for Rez. And that just leaves it in a two on four. I said that too quickly. Shiro on his own. And he's going to go for that long range spray. He'll get another kill. So some some slip ups here maybe for NIP, maybe giving away a little bit more than, than you would have wanted. But if they can survive with the last three, it should be fine, especially if they can deny the bomb plant too. Creeping up on that catwalk. Devices up at the A bomb site with an AWP and down at long it's Plopsky. Linus is miles away. Shiro, he probably will not know to check this. It's sort of unlikely in a three versus one like this that someone's going to be in the T spawn side of this. He is looking for it though. He's got the right idea. He catches the gun barrel and now it gets real interesting. Not only the kill, but he can get the bomb plant here, assuming he made the cross. Yep, not tagged there. And that means it's a, a really disturbing one versus two here. If Shiro wins this one, NIP are going to probably implode pretty early on. That's going to be so devastating. It's crouched in. They have some time. They have a kit on either player. And importantly, they have a Molotov they can try and throw in. Yep, that'll block out one of the positions. Even if they don't get the kill behind it, it's enough to not have to check there. Shiro, though, lined up. Good headshot. Can he get one more? He's already at the quad. He just needs to click it. He's almost got a deagle out instead. Oh, it's so close. Quad kill. Nearly the ace clutch, but 
It's going to be Plopsky to bring it home. Oh, it is. And man, powerless. I like this setup. That AWP followed up by a rifle. One for one trade over here. Plopsky going to be able to find one device has got his back. However, they know that he's here with that AWP and it's a good trade, but it's still a two on two. LLN and Z still on the bomb site, but with a USP. Yep, he didn't have enough to buy anything else. Kitty gets something done. Nope, Inters is pre firing that angle. Okay, then. One versus two for Rez. Not a bad player to have left, but against the AWP, one misstep and he's done. Oh no, it's Gambit making missteps. What a clutch from Rez. He just stops the spray into the one tabs to get that second kill. Absolutely brilliant. And Gambit kind of losing track of the round there. Why, why make that wild jump up with the bomb in hand? They just never expected it to be there that quick. I mean, that, and to be fair, Rez just, there's nothing I could do. Nine to four, Gambit winning another round. Let's see, this is uh, Axel's perspective. Plopsky only had a pistol. Yeah, I mean, uh, not a whole lot that Linus and Plopsky could do there with their firepower. Great stuff. Yeah, that was device just getting caught. That but pokes it off and creates a bit of space. He can jump up on that box right on the other side. I'm shocked that no one from Gambit has moved down middle at the very least. That seems like a big risk device. He's sneaking his way in, but in turns, just a little bit more clever, and he's going to find the kill on device here. That's a big one, and the shadow shows on the ground. The Fanny, he's able to flick and take down Linus. Now it's a three versus four. As they get the kill on Hobbit, at least, Hampus, he wanted to sneak in that one, but they're in trouble here in IP. They're a man down and 50 seconds on the clock. And Plopsky's been spotted as well, so there's no reason for them to rotate off here again, but they know that these players are out here. Nafani, that was the must-win fight. Inters will fight back, though. Takes down Hampus, and he lines him up, holds the bomb site, rock solid. Inters gets a chance to shine at the end, and he comes through in spades for his team. Well played. He actually is so screwed in that window when he pop it inside of the bomb site. 17 seconds on the clock as they make their way through. That is so scary. They use that device smoke instead, but he's almost sprayed down two people through and no bomb plant yet. They need it. Device goes down. And now there's only five seconds. They finally get the bomb plant, but this has cost NIP everything in this round. Rez is practically dead and they're in a three versus four. They're in so much trouble here. Axile coming in with the kill on Linus and now they're both stuck. Shot in the back of the head. Nafani coming in and that's absolutely everything they needed. A triple and Gambit going to be at six to three. That is clinical, Anders. That was clinical. What a thing of beauty. And for once, we actually see the lineup work. It feels like it's always just going slightly to the left or slightly to the right. They aren't quite tagging the guy getting the bomb plant. But that time, it is a perfect retake for Gambit. It's hard to beat. It's hard to get any cleaner than this one. And Nefani, man, his aim. Yeah. Just looking so clean. Very well done. Yeah. That's such a big run. Eagle, shy of the mark. Oh, he does adjust. One -on -one. Nice. Into the head and Kyojin. The rookies. The battle of the rookies. Oh, that was a sound cue. Lovely. And Kyojin. Gonna go for a speedy descent. Lucky's not gonna be prepared for a timing like this. Another sound cue to reinforce it. And Kyojin holding his spray. Risky maneuver there. Lucky can still clutch up very low. Playing a sound game. He has to plant eventually. It's up to the perception. Vents to top. Secret to top. Lucky's playing a wild game now. Oh, he's calling the bluff out. here. Trying to fake him out. The door swings open again. Kyojin yes. does not have it. Well played by Lucky on he the sound cue. Him. Completely. He starts to identify where it is. Okay. He's got a kit. It's not the end of the world for Kyoto, but Lucky advancing into a powerful, hard, deep clear. Confirmation of where he advances from. Kyoto will have to swing through this clear. Keep that one posted, but we're turning our attention towards top site here. They're lining up. Molly for back aside. Here we go. Yeah, Kyojin's going to be tested here. Shox has to tuck in. Vision. Oh, what? No one clears. He's allowed to get one. Activated in the vents is a no. Kyojin sprays down three. And Astralis left wanting. Lately in transition. Look at him wide open. It's up to Apex to deliver. And he has. Chops the head off of the snake. Dupree writhing in response. Down to 10 and more oh, damage. Oh, just flicked. caught. Yeah. No longer does he have the element of surprise or even a functional health bullseye who's likely to finish this one. It's a layup. And here comes the dunk. Magisk is on lock. They have his exit on either side. Apex won't let this slip. Ooh, he could have. Doesn't. And 
just horrible circumstances again for the Danes. Yeah, this is not the position you want to be in at all. Now they have space, but back into Apex has been very active this round. He's going to catch a great timing. Dupree clears, but Apex steps on in, and it's just one man remaining lucky again, left in the clutch. And this headshot angle is a nuisance to clear. Apex spotted, and he's good to go. He is looking set. Look at his <laughs> Vitality are taking care of business here today. Now, I know we've, only, we've seen a couple of missed shots, but also if Zyru can maintain form like this, this is exactly what the stats boys have been asking for. Careful, fast, shocks, blind, does adjust and ret return to vision in time. It's up to Kyojin now to at least take another body down, and he will. More than that, delivers in large capacity. Finished off with ease and, yeah, no sweat on the brow, really, for Vitality there. None at all. Uh, I think right now, if Kyojin continues to get multi-kills towards the top side, that's only going to help his confidence. I think this is fantastic for him to mop them up like that, and this is what they need. You can even see the smiles. Really good mood over there in the French camp right now. Now, guns are coming back out, and this one looks like more of a standard... They used the CT smoke as a nice little wall to retreat behind after taking the initial engagement. Armored deagles. A man disadvantage, everything indicating this one not going to be fun. Now, they fake the extinguish to imply there's still Sandbag's presence. This is going to get a bit awkward here. They're pushing forward. Yeah, and it's up to Apex. That could be enough. Yeah, looking the wrong way. Pulls out his nades. The classic in-game leader, Death, and Zipex hands two more into the feed. His Deagle finds three. Chaos. It's when the guns come out that they seem to struggle a little bit more so. But there have been a couple of close ones here. So not smooth sailing so far for the French. This is the shots from Zip. So they catch Apex with those nades out and flick around in time. It's chaotic, but these are must-hit kills and huge stuff from Zip there as they all line up. <laughs> yeah, not the most glamorous three. What do you expect this? He's clearing. He's clearing. Zywu, not ready. Glaive, a huge contribution, but that's not enough to secure the round. You can see the pressure is on. Zipex is doing so much work. He's taken two. Or at least one and a half down. They are wrapping into Magis' sight. And he is standing to deliver. All three on the deck. Sends them home. Big from Magis and Astralis. Now they've got the cash injected into the system. Vitality, quite the contrary. This gap will now close. Just to note, that that's the first time we've seen Magis within this series getting fired up there on the cans after those three kills. He's yelling. They're starting to get this one going. And they have to. Very, very dire circumstances ahead of them here, but very good stuff to handle that. And you can see it getting out of control. They're going for the mid to B. Zip slows it down. Magiskir able to deliver with the AK-47 and then head on the swivel. You see him flicking on over to deal with the last man of shock. So beautiful stuff. And now we can see... You can see a very clear game plan. Which is, don't let them have their usual space on Ram. Zywu's caught one just over Fading. the smoke, but as it fades, he strikes and trades. Masut is his next victim. Glaive pulls Astralis into a man advantage. And now they've got nothing. Oh, Apex, not happy with that. He's lost two. He's hit the desk. He's upset again. Another opening kill goes their way, and it all just falls apart so quickly. Just by sticking around, Glaive is really disruptive. Like we talked about it, Vitality, they're, they're happy to spend 40 seconds waiting and anticipating the aggressions, but if they don't get the ramp in the first place, they're just getting bullied, Bo boost mid. Lucky's going to be easily spotting this one out. They can double swing, and that should be impossible for him to get away from. <laughs> don't need the second component. CT is smoked. Shocks, interestingly enough, does seem to imply they're going A. Through the elevator room. This is a nice mix-up. Glaive's going to be threatened here. Sandbags would be nice. He's just going to advance even further. Taking this fight. Glaive doing it on his own. He started this round with a double. He's got a good idea as to where they're coming from. Apex going to look him to be his fourth and Glaive completely leading. There's no one that can touch him. He's got a flash for good measure. Shocks is the ace and that's lovely. Glaive unpredictable in individual form, but he's found it when it matters most. Oh, they need that. Need Down in the dumps, Chad. They've lost their map pick. They're up against the ropes. The defending champion five down at his hand. And it started again with a vitality opening. Here it is. Uh, and then Glaive just pushes forward. Gets these two big kills. Like the first one, sure. The second one to Masuda gets caught slouching as well. And then Glaive just dealing with it. Rocking a hard place. They're coming from ramp. They're coming through CT spawn. Taking all the fights. Winning all the fights. And getting this one done. Half is one. Eight to four.
And there's some life now in the Astralis camp. I've seen Magis get the name of the game because Zywoo's walking on in for an open A site, trying to commit this, sell this. They've done a great job, Zywoo, to try and plant uncontested, but Zipex has acknowledged this. They rotated back in. They know they left some gaps. Zywoo to punish Zipex. Oh, and he just looks away. He just looks away. He's second guessing a little bomb plant in. Yo Jin, 1 HP. Zaiwu needs to survive now. He has to clutch. This is a big one for Vitality. 9 6 they can work with, and Zaiwu has to work his magic. The flash ain't bad. They turn it though, and gap closed. Zai Lucky falls. No trade available from Zipex. He's going to sit it. He's, He's going to hold it. it. It's against an orb, and there's still a smoke up. Oh! oh! He cancelled it, and Zaiwu calls the bluff. Chill your beans. No time for this. Playing games. Zaiwu surely done enough. He confirms he's off the bomb. Survival is enough. Zaiwu clutches up for Vitality, and that is the step towards the 9 6 half. Aggressive angle. Oh my god, the damage. Look at that. The feed. Chaos. As even trades are found. Magisk just in the off angle, looking to strike. Well, fires off a warning shot across the bow. Zaiwu advancing and dead. And Shocks is his next victim. Well handled. Magisk is so comfortable on the M4A1. Awkward bomb retrieval, but that's the least of his issues right now. <laughs> no trace of fire. You've got to find it. Yep. Maybe just cut noise and hope Astralis overthink this one. Ah, they've got Glaive there. The door's closed on the way back for Masuda here. You can just see if he wants to go back, it would have to be through middle. So Masuda with 45 seconds left on the clock. Plenty of utility here, but that low HP, the fact that they have a very good idea where he's coming from, this one is just a matter of time. Outlook very bleak. They're not able to convert. 10 for Astralis. Now that is what we're talking about. Well, they can wrap it up right now. Shox is coming back for the ramp flank. He'll have a chance. And down goes Zaiwu. Couple more clicks required. Zipex and Lucky recovering for Astralis, trying to force Dust 2. It's for survival at the Major. Kyojin so low, but nearly burnt to a crisp. He's looking the wrong way. Oh, backpack spotted. He's got to play this oh! well. That's something. It's up to Lucky to save Astralis. He can finish it right here and now, the bait. He calls the bluff, the shot fires the bullets. He's got to hold it now. Lucky just needs to click on the head and shocks. He's doing it with the defuse. He says play on. Nine kills, 29 rounds, but the defuse has saved Vitality. Oh, Lucky may need an extra 10 seconds after that one. Bodies, that's what they have. Oh God. And that's the counter you tell already. Okay, bait, switch, swing. Threat of the scout. High flashes for his repeaks. He is posting the numbers necessary. Zywoo just has a lovely shooting gallery cleaning up. Dupree to counter with a rebuttal. Missed shot, shy of the mark. He does find the second. Some Oof. style points for Dupree. He out orbs Zywoo. With the 1700 version. Missing to just in the blind spot. Oh. Dupree snaps into another head. Careful now. Vitality vulnerable, shocks the flank. He will be silenced. Dupree though, no slouch. Huge round. Just the scout constantly finding those heads right there. Some great shots from Dupree. And that was a very, very limited investment. So keeping these rounds highly contested here. Yeah, Vitality still does it. You know, a lurky smoke to crawl on in. The gap is held for now. Apex late from tons. Glaive will be on notice. It's all about who strikes first. It's all about who strikes first. Four versus two. They've done a lot of the heavy lifting. Down goes Apex. Kyojin's his next victim. Glaive again saving Astralis. And Zipex puts the cherry on top. Recovered between the two of them. They find all five in the fifth as well for Astralis. It was tense. Oh, I'm so glad they can laugh that off. That could have been the game down there. Just the morale of the team. You made the right call, but you left the bomb at spawn. You had no smokes left to get yourself back across here. This is how Zywoo opened up the account. Matt just trying to do it safely. Just gets plucked out of the air. And this is when the smokes are faded. It's being thrown across. They grab that. Kyojin even finds this kill. It's a two on four situation. Well handled. Incredibly well handled. It's Glaive. This as well just seals the deal. Kyojin has nothing done. The gap in the smoke, you can understand why. And looking for info, the Glock's going to spot it, but that's all he can do. He can only spot it, and that's going to push them forward oh. on long into Zaiwu. More. A whole lot more. He flashes for himself, wants to take it, get the answers, get the info, get the frag. Lucky's his next victim. Bomb loose, round save. Zaiwu has delivered when it matters most.
Four kills on the AWP, and I mean, that could so quickly have spiraled out of control. You can see x -Taz just trying to contain his uh, <laughs> emotions after that. Let's boy Flash will come in. Catches his teammate as well, and that's not quite enough. Apex dinked. Lives on. They are walking into Glaive and Lucky. And even trades. Need this one. Misses his chance, and, and the shock's allowed to Cookie. be positioned. He's burning down. Still takes the pot shot. Now falls all onto Magic, they but get it's across so up. doable. And that's the bomb. That's the bomb. This is it. Throws it across. We comes. Nine. Just picks it up. Seven. Can he deny? Can he deny? Safe plant. Trying to chip oh! away. Cuts him on the jump. And Apex is next. Magis comes up clutch when it matters most. Huge. Absolutely mental. Oh, sheesh. Kebab. They had to throw it across. He's planting safe through the box. Shox doesn't get it. And Apex are sitting. Dark Magis holds his nerve. Oh, brilliant play. It should be almost impossible here for Copenhagen Flames to get back into this round. They kind of needed a kill to make it a two-on-two -two before the bomb actually went down. Nikoto's trying to sneak in here. Oh, he's going to get the headshot on Stown, and the rest of them are very low on health. There's a shot from Hooksy. Tessus is now down and out. They have a little bit of time still where they can go for the defuse. They tapped it once, and they're trying to lure him in, and one of them needs to keep going. Refresh running onto the site, and he's going to get both the kills. Man, that is close. I think they needed to hold it in. If they had any chance for that 10-second defuse, they had to mm -hmm. go straight for it. Yeah, they had to go straight for it, but still, talk about a big win. They managed to kill everybody off on Heroic, and that was a round of eco for uh, Copenhagen Flames. So talk about a big round. Copenhagen Flames, they don't win the round, but they still force Heroic to spend so much money. And so that can put themselves in a position to really do some damage here and to start taking control because they get to go for the full nade lineup. It was like uh, Copenhagen Flames are the ones who can put a stop to it at any time if they can just start hitting some shots. Heroic are just uh, not giving them the respect. So Nico now with the angle on yard. Smoke should be coming down to block off Garage. Oh, he's just going to catch Katie now for free. The trade kill whiffed. There was a chance there to bring it back. Yes, there was. He's reading this so well. Yeah, he was in Tess's mind. Bomb has dropped really far outside. Kadian was carrying that along when he got picked off. So Nikoto is going to continue with the triple there on refresh. It's he, He's picked up every single kill outside. That's fine. Jabby almost could have kept spraying maybe down on his own. And it feels like finally there is going to be a third. All the time in the world to just take over this bomb site as they please. Man. What awareness from Tessus to check Silo for the flank. If I'm if I'm coming in with a flank like that up on the silo and someone is watching that from that absurd angle, I'm breaking my keyboard in half. That's I'm gonna be so upset if that happens. You 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 are hundred percent sure you're winning that fight if you're coming in from the CT side like that. You shouldn't even be there to begin with. That is so well played. Two versus one now. Siphon's already got one of the kills in the in the 1v3. Molotov up there. If he can isolate the fight at the bottom, he may be able to get it. Shush is down there and his teammate can't help him out. What a headshot! He taps the bomb and he knows Reefer has to run for it. He's still got a couple of seconds here. Oh! A running headshot to knock him out! He lives on two health. That is disgusting. <laughs> and it looks so casual for refresh to side, but the reaction on the other one, sitting back in the chair, that one. To the B bomb side, they might not know. Oh, this could be so devastating. They've almost won this round here on the heroic side, but now with Roy up here, who would possibly check this corner? They're going to go for the bomb plant. Tessis is running through. He actually does check for it, and Roy, he could be in trouble. He's almost out of bullets on the other side of it. Ready and waiting is Shush, and he goes for a peak hook. See to help out. They're fighting back. What a round this is. Refresh, he's trying to hunt them down, but he's tacked up himself. They're both right there waiting for him. Instant headshot to take down Roy, and now it's just ringing around the road. See, look, see, he's going to keep going for it. There's no kit. This is a 10-second defuse. It should be impossible. He's shoulder peaked. And oh, there it is. Refresh. He comes back. I'm not sure is that time. I think, I think there is. Refresh. Got it. He actually found a way to track all across the map, get back in, and win the one versus two. What a beginning to Ancient. <laughs> oh, I wish we could hear this. <laughs> what is going on here? The dude? bomb is here. Yeah. There's 30 seconds. Oh, no. Shush with the AK. This Does is... Shush save them again? No, I mean, they have time. They can still find him. Jumping around the corner with the Mac 10. He keeps spraying. He's going to get one more. What a round out of Shush. He's already got the triple. 20 seconds on the clock here for Jabby to try and get the bomb down. But as soon as he tries, 
He can fake it once, but that's it. He can't keep doing it. If he does it again now, they're probably going to run out of time. That's a nice shot on refresh. And now the question is, could Kadian get here in time? He tries for another fake, but that might be the that might be the round. He does it again! Oh, and Kadian, he's just waiting him out. That is cold. Stone cold out of Kadian. The fact that he doesn't go on that last plant is wild. I'm losing my mind over here, Anders. The f the, the, as soon as he goes for the second fake, that's it. Kadian not rushing it at all. The, the <laughs> nerves of steel. Those are some of the most painful. And now they have to try and see if they can jump him. They're throwing more bodies at him. That's not been a good idea so far. He's just at an off angle here. Impossible to check. Jabby goes down. Shush with his 16th kill right then and there. Well, they're finally going to be able to take care of him. But there's 10 seconds left. They're going to go for the bomb plant. I'm, actually, I'm shocked they even are getting a bomb plant here. Stout comes up for the spray down. Oh, wait. Still a one versus two. He sprays. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Nikonos, quad kill for the win. Talk about the hero play that had to happen for Copenhagen Flames. It was going to take an individual play like that. It was going to take Heroic kind of getting ahead of themselves in the... Re the bomb. Now, he can make it to the bomb sign to get the bomb down before they get there. If he's really bold, he doesn't check and he just goes for it. He's made the crossing there. Has to find a little bit of a spot. 20 seconds. They don't know where he is, but now... Wait. Okay, they realize they're going to go towards the A-bomb site. He's got no nades. They've got a double HE. I don't think that will help them that much. If they had a smoke or a Molotov, that would be the real deal. And he's hiding way back in CT's bomb. The bomb, though, is planted not really for him where he is. That could get incredibly awkward. They have a kit on one of them, so the orb is going to be covering at the same time. Tess is sneaking in. There's the shot on one of them and trying to keep the dream alive here on Ancient. One versus one. Nikodos, he's going to go down. And Tess is, he'll keep it going for Heroic. Yeah, once you see it, it's the AWP and the rifle together, that's where it starts to get just a little bit dicey. No smoke to cover it. Yeah. Only a couple flashes in an HE. But with the AWP, it's just if they split up like that, it's so hard to get that trade kill. We saw actually Heroic suffer from that in the, in the Nikodos. Okay, then. I mean, you're right, though. Close range, C said, in that yeah, connector. Thought the, I thought they would just try and do that nasty swing around the corner and just, you know, look for the fight. You saw that. Just the leg there. Roy, you could see him communicating. He's like, all right, they're pushing out. They're back down into connector, and they're going to make a run for it. One kill with a deagle. What a headshot to follow it up with. Roy is gone, but Nikoro's taken two in return. There it Three is. Three versus four. Sees that up close. Sees that up close. And then you do so much damage, the deagle can just come along and find kills of its own. If only they could get to those rifles. The problem is the rest of the Copenhagen Flames team, they're so far away. They can't rotate in to pick up the second AK. Oh, wait. Did he spill the bomb? Nikodos? He's going to catch the timing. That's unreal. There you go. <laughs> well, I mean, he died in battle, right? So Valhalla, guaranteed. Exactly. Get that. Get that ticket. Oh, now quickly through. No smoke to alert him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> duck hunt. It's a headshot as well. Oh, they can't run back. This is, this is, they can hear it. Hooksy's right here. Yep. He, he knows they're running. Roy is just listening on the other side. Uh, they think they're really clever, but that's not the case. Copenhagen Flames, they see it all coming. Nikolas just trying to stay alive. He'll get one more kill. Back for action. No scoping. Shush. Oh, that is a ridiculous ace. <laughs> Nikonos, that is how you hold the line. He doesn't need the help of anybody else. And these rounds now are just going to serve to pump up Copenhagen Flames. Nikonos again, again saving his team. This is a major tournament. Forget about all that online. You do this on LAN, it counts. It counts all the way. No scope, and then... No scope. I just, I, he gets a double no scope with one of them being a headshot to ace the round. I have never seen anything like it. But it is not enough for the double. He very nearly had it. And now Kadian on his own. One versus two. He gets one. Tries to shoot through. He picks up an AK. Continues to spray. He can't catch Jabby. Just a bullet away. And Kadian. He's still got a little bit of a chance here. Jabby's on the other side. And there's the headshot. There's the clutch. The quad kill. Takes a deep breath. It's going to be their round. <laughs> oh, what class. Yeah, remember, you got to defuse the bomb here. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Priorities. 
without even a kid, he's just taking his sweet time. The bomb had only just been planted, so he knew he had plenty of time to work with, but what a reaction from Kadian, man. He is such a class act. It's so fun. That that takes him from six to ten kills. That He's really not had much of an impact in this game. No, he hasn't. He that hasn't. Is big. And this is after exactly we had the boost. The pick on Shush already taking one of the heavy hitters out of the picture. But Kadian making all the difference in this round. Look at this. This is crazy. I can't believe it. He's just looking to survive and delay. The bomb will be planted and look at Rops' flank. It's gone. Kick it. Now spotted at 19 HP. Bemis can come up clutch here for Maus. The youngest in the server in that respect. What have you got? He just holds for the Buster fight. They could line up. Kick it first, tucks in, Buster's next. Gets the info as well, a flash for good measure. And Buster loses his head. Beamers pulls Mouse's sixth out of the hat. And in the face of adversity, a numbers disadvantage and it's no issue for him. Oh, that's staying steady again. Just calm. He, he didn't look like he winced at any moment right there. And Bemis can look a little bit shaky on the aim at times. This was that Frozen Yukinder exchange that went on down. And then this is James just picking into Frozen's line of sight. A great shot to hit. Rops actually flubbed his line there against Kick It on that rotation. And then Bemis has to clean up the mess right here with a beautiful one on two to deal with right now. And it is going to be flit over towards Donut. Going mid. Yeah, so if they walk in now, they can at least get a one on two situation but flit stands up there okay. you go that's huge from flit he lost his life surely the bomb can go down rops bodyguarded now temple occupied this is a big frag from frozen he still delivers 18 and counting humbled now a 1v3 for rops time to impress puts buster to rest donut a threat james as well in the temple last scene he did already fire a shot yakinda's closing the gap Rops to come up clutch, misses his shot, knows James coming. Molotov out, what's he supposed to do? Yakinda, the threat, Rops is doing it all here, the 1v3. Salt in the oh, wound, get him and out. bullets in the head. Get him out of here. VP dead on arrival here in Ancient. 2v5, 2v5 situation right there, just dealt with. Oh. Good to see the kid smiling, man. Gonna flood out, flit with the balcony. Smoke. That's a good indicator. And they might re-aggress here. Downing into the pit. Flip. Does hit both of them. Not bad. Not bad from the new addition. Rops has backs turned into the apps. Can he slink away? Won't clear bedroom. Has adjusted quickly. Hot on the heels of James. The bomb does go down. Dexter rotates in library side. It's frozen and Rops partner up on short. No kit for this. No kit and a two-man pit set up to break. This has to be Vertus Pro starting as they mean to go on. Huge nade. Looks very promising. Oh, it's Just a bit shy. deep. Just shy. Bit deep. Yakinda swings out to confirm the advance. Util from Dexter will make things a little sketchy, but only for a moment. They know where he's coming Huge from. Flipped flip. on for an ace. Give him the ace, boys. Let him hunt well. it down. Four kills. Looking hot to trot. He's coming in to clear out Robs. And yeah, denied in that respect, but... a. Easy conversion for Verts Pro, thanks to Flip. Easy as you like right there. So a good start, right? And we obviously saw the betterment of uh, VP when they were able to be on that T side, right? But Yakinda was the force. He was the individual finding all those opening kills. But here it is. Oh, felt like Flit had all the time in the world there to track that first one down. Continuing his dominance here. And yeah, just a bit of pep in his step. Lovely stuff there from Flit. Great way to kick. it. Especially with the 5-7, but he's going to be nullified almost completely. Bemis would have oh. to hit a steamer. Oh. oh, two! Snappy, and he goes unchecked. Rob's allowed to contribute as well. It's falling apart at the seams. Bemis, oh! oh, he hits another. VP, dilapidated James, motivated to come up. Clutch with four of his own. Surely not. James to save VP. Looking for it is Acor. Oh. And Pulls off the 1v5. Heroics from everyone of Mao's. James just better. What a round of Counter-Strike that was. Holy moly. Oh. What a coming of age of Bemis in a round like that. He's looking better. Sides have swapped. Mao's taken to the T side. And let's see how far they can push this. You can see a quick beat in their mind. Looks like VP have sussed it out quickly. Kick at Yakinder are on the way and Buster's already taken Rops out of the equation prior to the commitment. They're wrapped in now. The cacophony of USP bullets thrown through. Oh, and Hakor from the back of his head 
Buster connects. Oh, and Beamus puts his head in the vice as well. This has fallen straight apart. It's over. They don't even realize it. It's uh, that easy. Mouse runs straight into the meat grinder. Buster delivers, and we are speed running this one now. 13 to 3. Mouser are on their knees. Not the most exciting of Counter-Strike, unless you're a VP fan, or in the first map, you're a Mouse fan. And there's a gap right now. Rops is looking the wrong way. He's left the behind open. Huh? So passive, and now Dexter's been pantsed. Needs something. Frozen's gone too. Falling apart. He's anticipating He's Rops him. loud on the way in, and Yakinda has not let his foot off the gas. Oh, that feels like a fumble. Rops has really dropped the ball there, right? It's his job to cover the flank and the gap what? that was created. Yakinda gets three kills out of that. A mistake and VP profit in a massive way. I don't know what... What was he looking I, for? I, I don't know. I don't know. But okay. that, that's that's not the way you want to start things here. Mouse sports are immediately going to be forced by and back into things. Now, look, they got the bomb down. They made the entry look pretty easy in towards the site. So they know that they can keep this pressure up. And well, as far as the buys go, it's going to be pretty... Decent right now for Mouse. Comparable almost. I mean, yeah. you've got, yeah, significantly more rifles, sure. This is Yakinda just ruining the day of Maus. He's got some great shots in him. Even the third, he's just not flustered. Jame, the huge gap right now in mid. Gaping chasm. Beamer's heard he's heard something. this. Heard something. He's reserved on this. Nade draws attention B side. Robs is desperately trying to have crosshairs looking at him. Beamus to strike, does, transfers beautifully. VP on notice, three already. Beamus has done everything for Maus. A big round as well, the full investment out of VP. Bomb loose, Rob's not looking. Oh, the flash, he lives on, saved by the flash. He only gets the one of the two, up to Aggressive retake smoke, they wanna go for this. The bomb now is planted. If they can get to after plant positions, the retake will be swift. Frozen, elevated position, hoping to catch them unawares, but it's not to be. Dexter perhaps can do more. Just the one from him so far. It's Acre as well. Three versus two. A big find from the Aussie, but now shut down. Acor with it all to play for. And he will catch Yakinda. A one-on-one -on -one with Jame. A battle of wits. Walking in on the P250. Jame. Oh! Go! Acor finds 18! Exactly what the doctor ordered. Zero and 11, Chad. He's 25 frags deep. He's here now. And Mouse Force, <laughs> they've got it. One more round required here. VP not going down without a fight. And that's against Jame in this tournament. Jame and Clutches. He's been racking him up. <gasps> Ooh, I stay. I stay. One more is all they need. That's the